welcome to the show. It's good to be back. And I really love doing these interviews and learning about the guests. And then I get to share it with all of you. And this is obviously a very special episode because it's number 200. So I just want to give a quick shout out to anyone who took the time to listen to the show and everyone who shared it. And of course, all the guests who came on the show, all the PR people who helped make it happen. And all the websites like Blabbermouth and Sleaze Rocks that uh, post about my show and give me press. So just thank you to everybody. Uh, we made it to 200. Pretty amazing. I'm extremely grateful. Um, also to anyone who's taken the time to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm going to push that again. Yes, uh, I'm really trying to get to that 1,000 subscribers. So if you haven't done that, uh, please go ahead and subscribe to help me out. Now then, uh, on to today's guest, William Sadler. He is a legendary actor. You know him from Die Hard 2, The Shawshank Redemption, The Green Mile, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, and so many other things, movies and TV shows, and even stage plays as well. I think he has over 180 film and TV credits, so just an amazing career, and it's not over. He tells me that his latest project with Karen Allen is the best work that he's ever done. So he's got some great stories and behind-the-scenes takes on acting and, and movies and TV business, so... I think you guys will really enjoy this one. Here we go. Please welcome William Sadler to the show. So amazing to, to finally sit down and talk with you. I've been a fan for a long time, so there's so much to go over. We'll try to get through as much as we can. How are you doing? Thank you. This is Good the first, to be here. Yeah. I'm doing fine surviving the holidays. And yeah? Stay in one piece. Now, are you filming a movie right now, or are you, you on a, a hiatus? Um, I, just, I just finished uh filming one called um salem's lot right okay that's what i thought yeah uh, we wrapped that up a couple of weeks ago so that was that's the most recent one but i've got one i have another one that i finished before that that's that's about to make the rounds of the um festivals called um a stage of twilight with karen allen yeah that uh that i'm very proud of do you think that's is that getting Oscar buzz? I'm starting it right now. I'm starting the. I mean, is you, start, wait, you, please you start. said that you're very proud of it. So, I mean, it must have something. I, no, I'm very I, I'm proud of it because I think it's probably it may be the best work that I've ever done. And it's wow. I don't I don't shoot anybody. I don't I'm not chased by zombies. <laughs> um I'm not chased by vampires. Um, I'm not a terrorist. I'm just a, a, a husband of this woman for 42 years. And it's a beautiful little story. Yeah, um, isn't it? It's about a man, that, a terrible. dying man. He is. He, get, he, gets a, he gets a bad diagnosis and the two of them have to sort of, they sort of butt heads about what to, what to do about that. And uh, but it's a love story, hmm. and I, <laughs> I guess I haven't had a chance to play many love stories in my career. So I was I was really pleased with it, and um, and Karen Allen is just delicious to work with. She's just the best. Yeah, and, she's from uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark and Animal House. And, right, right, yeah. exactly, exactly. Beautiful actress. And, so, yeah, because isn't the the plot is that you aren't? Don't you go decide to live in the woods in a trailer while you're while you're dying <laughs> by yourself? Yeah, well, he, well, he tries to. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, well, he, he as happens with people when they get they get toward the end, they start to lose control of things, um, and he can't bear the idea of this woman. Of, that he that he's loved for so long, seeing him that way. So he's gonna, you know, he comes up with this other plan, but uh, but she's having none of it. Hmm. How do you but, prepare for a role there, like that? Therein lies the movie. Yeah. Do you have to like think about how you would deal with that yourself? Um. Yeah. You do. You do. You do. You have to. You have to find things in yourself that feel like that. That let me see how else how I can put this. Um, I've never. Uh, 
I've never murdered anybody, but I, in my l- actual life, I've never killed anyone. Um, but but I've done it on television. I've done it in movies. And you have to, you don't have to have actually done it to ex- to know what it feels like. You can imagine it. You can imagine these things in great detail if you if you focus. Um, and that's sort of the actor's art. You know, you don't have to um, you don't have to have actually lived the experience. But with, in the case of the thing with Karen Allen, um, I'd been married for forty two years to the same woman, and there was there were a lot of parallels that I could lean on Mm -hmm. you know i know what those arguments feel like (laughs) sure (laughs) you know it's not a it's it's not a you know it's not uncharted territory right but also you have to take it from that another person the character's perspective right because if you're I'm sure if you or I killed somebody, we'd probably feel immense guilt and those kids. But there's some people who are so evil, they kill somebody and they don't feel bad. They feel proud of it or whatever, right? I know. I've, and, I've played, and I've played some of those guys right. who, would, who would kill you and sit on your chest and eat a sandwich and think nothing of it. <laughs> oh, God. Um, I don't know. This, it, it's, it, it's a make-believe world, but you, but you use as much of yourself as you can because – that's the wrong that's this is the wrong material this is mm. what this is what you have to work with right uh, um this is what you bring to the table and i you know i thought the writing was terrific and the 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 writing felt real uh, as as you're reading through it you can you can feel emotions start to flutter up because you're saying these words and it's and it bec- it's it was easy to fill those shoes. It was, um, it was, it was extraordinary. I've never, I don't think I've ever gotten so deep in deeply involved in a character in my life. So I'm curious to see what the rest of the world thinks of this movie. I'm excited. Now, do you get to improvise a little? Cause I know you said, I think I heard you say that you were, you and Karen Allen were, were laughing a lot, but I'm assuming that's probably more off screen than on screen. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, there is a there is a bit of improvisation. Sometimes you you get going in a scene, and you know you the the line between who you between you and the character starts to blur, and the and the conversation isn't over, and you need you know, <laughs> and you need one more line or one, um, and yeah, there is a there is a, a bit of improvisation. It should feel like an improv, even if you're even if you're doing the the writing verbatim, mm-hmm. even if you know, even if you're following the script to the letter. When it's good, it feels like an improv. It feels like you don't know what's coming next out of that other person's mouth, mm-hmm. and you you don't know what you're going to say. How yeah? How deep do you, you, you get? You do, you do, of course. I mean, you know, yeah. you know exactly yeah. what you're going to say, and you know you're cute. You know what she's going to say, but you, well, I do anyway. I, you get to a point where you try to you, you try to forget what's coming next, so that you can be surprised by it. Hmm. So so that her words can hit you, um, the way they would if you'd never heard them before. Right. Cause so how deep do you get into the method? Do you do like the method acting where you stay in character for the, the length of the filming? Or I know some actors are really like intense about those things. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> no. And it's, it's not, you know, nothing against the actors that, that work that way, but I, but I don't, I, I, t- I, I find that I have, if it's, if there's an emotional, if it's sort of a heavy emotional moment, or emotional scene, I find that I have to keep one foot in it. I have to I have to keep part of the character. Or um, in the Green Mile, for example, there's hmm. a, there's a moment where he he's searching for his children, and he sees uh, he, he they're he, they're moving through the fields, and he's calling for his kids. 
and they're finding bits and pieces. And then finally he sees John Coffey holding the two bloody children. And I, I, could, I couldn't, maybe other actors could, but I felt I had to keep, I had to stay in that mode. I had to, I had to keep those emotions of that, that panic that any parent would feel, you know, um, you've lost your children. You, and, you know, you come out on the porch and the screen's been slit and there's blood on the floor. Um, and you're just like awash with panic. And I, I sort of couldn't, I couldn't uh, just joke around with the crew and then turn and do the scene, mm. uh, just turn it on and turn it off. I felt I, I felt I had to kind of keep one foot in it all the, all the time, um, which is just an acting process, you know. I guess it, I guess maybe that's a bit methody, but but you can't get. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't just snap it on and snap it off. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you are. So you are kind of into it a little bit. Maybe not to the le yeah, level that some depends. of these guys go. But again, but... it depends. Again, it depends on the scene. I mean, yeah. If it's something, if it's something light and silly and you know easy to get to, then um, you know, then less so. But right. if it's something, but if it's something big and emotional, um, I I find I have to sort of cook cook that up and sort of keep it bubbling underneath until I'm done with the scene. Mm -hmm. So what do you like doing better? Or do you like having the variety of all the different kinds of roles? I love the thing. I really love the thing that I did with Karen Allen. I was, it sort of opened a door that I've been doing this a very long time. It seems like mm -hmm. um, uh, I was so, I was excited that it was such a different experience. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I have a lot of fun doing uh, doing what I do. I love I love the craft and I love the art of of acting, and especially acting on film these days because it's a little easier on your body. Um, uh, I find anyway. Mm -hmm. Stage work, stage work, doing doing the same show eight times a week for a live audience is <clears throat> is a lot. Yeah, when well, you've got to be so loud, right? It's got to be hard on your voice. Well, yeah, it's, it's, or you ha you have to project. You you have to you have to do it with enough energy that it carries that far to the back of the house. Because you did, uh, was it uh, Julie? On, on, yeah. What's that? I was just gonna say you did that um, play with a uh, was it with Denzel Washington where you played Julius Caesar? Julius Caesar, yeah. Yeah, tell me about that. That's that's got to be amazing to work with him. And but you're the lead, right? Well, well, Caesar is a he's the title character. Yeah, Denzel played the lead. He, he played he played Brutus. Okay. Um, and Caesar gets uh, if you know the play, he gets killed by the senators. Um, he has another but, line like "A two Brute" or exactly, yeah, exactly, which I said right to Denzel before he stabbed me. <laughs> um, yeah, that's dude, theater is theater is an extraordinary experience. I always it's the only advice I ever give actors, young actors um, um, who ask for advice. Uh, my feeling is you you should do you should do some theater. You should get some, you should get some of that training that happens when you have to do it eight times a week and there's, and no one can yell cut, mm. you know, it's, it's you and that audience and your fellow actors for two hours. And if something is going to happen for them, you have to cook it up. You have to make it occur over and over and over. You have to pretend you've never heard these words before and so on. Um, I think it's great. I, I really think it's great training you have to be read. You have to show up with your lines learned. Um, you learn to trust your fellow actors and so on. I just think it's a great training um, for actors. 
then when that, that you can you can then carry those skills over into movies and television they mm-hmm. tra- they trend you know the the style of acting is more intimate on film but being able to cook something up out of nowhere again and again and again you know at at three in the morning when they finally get to your scene in the movie Mm -hmm. Um, or you have to do a scene with a big dramatic scene with your wife and you're doing it with an actress you met 20 minutes ago um you you have to be able to cook things up and the and directors generally speaking on films and television don't have time to work with you right there's no re- there is no rehearsal you you cook it up mm. um you cooked it up for the audition that's why you got the job okay you'll you'll run through it two or three times to get the blocking for the cameras and then you'll shoot it wow so i mean yeah you because you period yeah you definitely <laughs> paid your dues to get what to where you are i mean because you worked in plays and i think at one point Weren't you uh, like, were you cleaning, cleaning a lobster boat or something? What was this in, in Boston? Is this a true story? <laughs> I was, you know, I was like, um, I was, uh, yeah, I was just starting out. I hadn't, uh, I had, I studied it. I studied, I did a lot of theater in college. I had four years of undergraduate at Geneseo, New York, and then two years at Cornell in the MFA program. And then I moved out to Situate Harbor where my sister had an apartment and uh, got a job cleaning the bottoms of lobster boats in a boatyard for a while. Um, that sounds awful. What? Is it awful? <laughs> what? 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 What a rotten <laughs> job. I did a, I did a oh. number of rotten jobs. <laughs> but you're still doing that. You, you have enough energy and enough drive and passion to do the plays at night. Right. You're still like, you're not going to go home and just go to sleep. You're like, I want to be an actor so bad that I'm going to go do these plays at night. I don't care. I, well, I, yeah, exactly. That was, I, I, I was auditioning for plays around Boston Mm -hmm. and got, and I got one called the relations of Paul Lejeune that we did in the, at the Boylston street theater. Um, But the act, but the acting thing has always been the exciting part. It wasn't, you know, the 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 boatyard work was just to put gas in my car. Sure. So I could get to the rehearsals and get to the performances. Um, but I was also really young and full of beans. I had a lot of energy in those days. Mm-hmm. Was it competitive to get those roles or were you able to kick ass in Boston because – there's not as many actors. I don't know. There, there's some pretty good actors in Boston. I got, but I did well. You're right. I, I got the lead in the relation. I played Paul Lejeune in the relations of Paul Lejeune. So, so then how did you get that? The first TV movie thing that you did was the great Walendas. That was your first role mm-hmm. with cameras. <laughs> did you, was that from Boston? Did you have to go to New York or LA to get know. that? By then I was living in New York city. Okay. By then. So then, so then you're acting plays in New York too, then. Right. Well, this New York city scared the crap out of me. I was, I grew up on a farm. Right. Yeah. After, after college, I was sort of dancing around New York. Um, and I finally did, I did a season at the Trinity square theater in Providence, Rhode Island. And uh, I went into the city and was cast by Joe Papp in a, a, a Shakespeare in the Park. He was doing Henry V uh, and Measure for Measure that summer. And myself and another actor from uh, Trinity Square were, were cast in the non-equity ensemble. And that, so we had to move to New York. Mm. And we, got in the, we shared an apartment in the East Village for 150 bucks. Oh my God. In New York. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, this is like, this is how long ago it was, but it was a, uh, yeah, it was $150 and on seventh street between uh, first and second. But that's what moved me. I finally moved to New York and now, you know, and started auditioning for things there. 
and got an agent and mm. so on and found met my wife um yeah and then spent 11 years in the east village acting in plays and broadway including the a year and a half on broadway with biloxi blues oh yeah and it, then I, was and that then with I, matthew broderick or is that only the movie version um that was i didn't do the movie version that but was the play with Matthew Broderick or no? Because I know he did yeah. play. Act. Okay, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. It was the it was the original Broadway cast with Matthew. Um, and then I did uh, Project X with Matthew, um, yeah. the movie, and that That's was really, cool. that was really my first big exposure to, um, you know, to the film, to the movie world. And it took me a, it, it took me several movies. I did the Great Willenders while I was in New York. Mm -hmm. You're right. That was a TV movie with Lloyd Bridges and Britt Eklund. Mm. <laughs> and I played a German, their German nephew from who dies. He died in the big fall in Detroit when the Willenders, the Willenders actually fell from the tightrope. Mm. Um, so I guess that was my first exposure on film. But then Project X, and uh, we shot at Fox. And I started to, I, I re, that's when I really started to get interested in doing films and thought, um, <laughs> you know, my wife and I decided, you know, you could make money doing this acting. Thing. <laughs> yeah, well, you, so. You don't have to do it for nothing. Right. So was it the, it was the Tales from the Crypt episode that really changed your life? Because that's where you uh, met Frank Darabont, who, and Joel Silver, I think, right? And they they got you Die Hard 2 and then the Shawshank that's and all right. that stuff, right? That's right. That was a, um, yeah, that was a, that was a, it was a great moment it was a it was funny it was one of those not you can't always point to a moment where your the direction of your life just turns um but that was one i came into audition for the for the cop it was the very first episode of tales from the crypt um and walter hill was directing it and Karen Ray was casting it, Joel Silver. And the executive producers were Joel Silver, Dick Donner, Bob Zemeckis, Walter Hill. Um, Legends. So these are like, you know, the big guns. Yeah. And they're doing this comic book uh, horror thing for, for HBO. And uh, I auditioned. And they brought me into audition for the cop at the end of the show who has like two lines. You, you have the right to remain silent. And I did, I read that. And I said to Karen Ray, I said, what's up with the, the lead? What's up with the role of Talbot? <coughs> and she said, they want, they want someone famous. They need a name. Right. John Malkovich or somebody like that. Yeah. Right. You hear that and you, you know, and you, you hear that all the time. They know they really need a name for this. So blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Christopher Lloyd or some, I don't know who they wanted, but uh, I said, Oh, and I left and she stuck her head out the window. I was halfway across the parking lot and she stuck her head out the window at silver pictures and said, Bill, come back. And she gave me the sides for Talbot and said, come back in on Monday and uh, I'll put you on tape. We'll see what happens. And she put me on tape and Walter cast me. And that was the, the next thing that Joel Silver did was Die Hard 2. Um, Frank Darabout was one of the writers on Tales from the Crypt. Mm -hmm. And the next thing he did was Project was the Shawshank Redemption. And then the Green Mile and then the Mist. And I did all of those with him. Um, I, worked, I think I worked with all of them. Did oh, and I did Trespass with uh, it was a movie with me and um, Bill Paxton and Ice T and Ice Cube for Walter. That's right. Hill. Yeah. So it was like from that <clears throat> time, from that tiny little moment, this you know almost everything else in my career. And it's crazy to think if you didn't ask about the lead role, you would. I, I could have walked. I could have walked out of the room. 
I could have just said, oh, okay, and gone home. And I would, you know, it would have been a different, I guess I would have had a different, I still would have had a career. It just would have been yeah. a different one. So, the, so then Die Hard 2, is it true that you were told that you were too young for the role, so then you had your friend put makeup on you to look older? <laughs> no, that was, that's what, that's what happened. Um, my audition for the same casting woman, Karen Ray, um, for Bill and Ted's bogus journey. Oh, that one. To, okay. To play death. The, the Grim Reaper. Yeah. That's a great and, role and too. Again, they wanted some, <clears throat> yeah, I, I went in and did the audition and they thought I was too, they liked the audition. They thought I was funny, but I was too young. And they were like, they were thinking death has got to be, um, you know, ancient. He's got, he's got to look. And they were thinking like Christopher Lee mm. um, from the horror movies. Sure. Um, and uh, so Karen Ray, I did the audition and then about, I didn't hear anything. And about three weeks later, Karen Ray called me and said, you have to go. <laughs> I need you to go to a um, Halloween store get some gray and put it in your hair and uh and i don't black out your teeth or something <laughs> they think you're too young come back and do the audition again looking older oh okay so so i called up i called up scott edo the makeup man from die hard 2 and told him my problem and he said come on come on over the morning of the audition so it's seven in the morning in his kitchen he made me look, you know, 80 or something, but believable, like camera ready 80. Um, wow. And I got in the car and I drove to Orion and did the audition. And they said, he looks a lot, he looks a lot older in person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. And didn't you, and didn't you steal the accent, the Czechoslovakian accent? You stole that from a, a, a cast member that you worked with or something? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So was he, is that pretty He's common still, he, in those kinds of things? Oh, I don't, oh, I don't know. You, you pick up. Um, I, I'm not sure. I had, I had worked with this actor named Jan Triskin in a play back in New York during those 11 years when I wasn't making any money. And uh, that was, uh, and he had, and he was from Czechoslovakia and he mm -hmm. had this wonderful, he just had this wonderful accent that was, was like this, everything was uh, the same, but he was, <laughs> <laughs> he would, he would say things like, my name is Ran Missing. And I thought it was, I thought it was funny. I used to, I used to <laughs> imitate, I used to imitate him. And, uh, and I thought I'm doing death in this audition. I can't just sound like I'm from Buffalo. You know? <laughs> it isn't. It's so a good I, point. Yeah. You know, where's, where's, he can't sound like he's a New Yorker or right. whatever. <laughs> well, it makes it epic. Cause like when you say the line, like, you have sunk my battleship. Like it doesn't sound, wouldn't it, sound as funny, you know. You ever sunk my battleship? Yeah. <laughs> Everything you say that way sounds yeah. funny. This character started to emerge, and that's what they finally reacted to and said, "Yeah, no, that's. <laughs> it's more important that he be funny." And um, so you know, I got the, I got the gig. That's epic. Well, it's funny too. I, I remember the very first day. I don't know if you know the movie, but there's a game sequence where he plays Battleship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I love the movie. Yeah. He loses at Battleship, then he loses at Clue, then he loses at Electronic Football. Yes. Um, and then he loses at um, Twister. Twister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, the very first day, I had never met Alex or Keanu. <laughs> Uh, we had never tried to make up on before. Um, and people were nervous. The producers were there. The director was like, everybody's like, is this going to work? Is this going to work? Um, with, you know, meaning me, because I was, you know, I'm doing this funny accent and so on. And the, the very first day of filming was the game sequence was 
<laughs> was you ready to sack my metal ship? Yeah. That, that whole sequence. Such a that great thing. sequence. And they, apparently they, this is my memory of it anyway. And I felt nervous. They felt nervous. And, but it went well. And they watched the dailies and they went, ah, okay. <laughs> this is, that's going to work. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they backed off and it was like, from then on, it was like, no, whatever, whatever he wants to do, that's, it's going to be, you know, because I had a good instinct about what was funny and um, who this guy was and what was funny about him. So they left me alone. Was it, what's it like working with Keanu Reeves at that point? Cause I think at that point in the career, his career, I felt like the, every character he played was this kind of like dopey surfer guy. So was he not really like that off camera? Was he like, would he change his voice af- off camera? Oh, he, oh, he what? No, off, off camera then, back then. He wasn't the, he's never been a dopey surfer guy that I, that I knew of. That was he, just like the characters he always played. Yeah, though, no, know? he, cre- he created this, whoa. <laughs> dude, you know, this, this that was guy. a pretty good piano. Um, dude. <laughs> <laughs> we totally. <laughs> um, I went well anyway he he it was a character it was a, it, interesting you know, he put that he put on um I'm not sure that he was ex- excited about doing a a sequel oh really um to Bill and Ted's I I could be wrong about mm. this I've never talked to him about it <laughs> but um and I remember his hair kept falling in his face and they kept trying to get him to sweep it apart so we could see his eyes. Yeah. And, so on. and he and he kept um, sort of hiding. Uh, yeah, I'm not. Sh- I'm not sure he was excited about doing a sequel. He always wanted to be more of a serious it. actor, right? And and as a matter of fact, after you know, after that movie came out, um, what well, he did, Speed, he did. You know, the Matrix. He, his career launched and went, right. you know, went off like a rocket. So he was, you know, I guess he was ready to do bigger, bigger things. Maybe it seemed silly to him or something. Sure. But, but, but when we did the third one, he was absolutely delightful. He was, huh. you know, it, it was, it was lovely. It was great to be able to go back. And recreate this chemistry with uh, Alex and and my character and my feeling my my feeling about going back and doing it after thirty years. I was I was worried that it wasn't going to feel the same, you know. Mm-hmm. Huh. Um, but I was I I needn't have worried. It was <laughs> they. They were Bill and Ted, and I was the and I was the death again, and it it just like exploded as soon as we were on the set together. All of the chemistry was still there. All the characters were still there. Um, we were all just as dopey and and uh, funny, and and it was great fun. It was it really was. It was genuinely fun to go back and do it again. That's cool. Well, we got to talk about Shawshank Redemption. That's got to be one of your most famous roles. Um, What's so interesting to me about that movie is I didn't realize how many different people were considered for the lead roles. Like, um, I think they originally were going to do, I think Rob Reiner saw the script, Frank's script, and said, okay, I want to direct this and I want Tom Cruise. And did he want Harrison Ford? Or they'd consider Gene Hackman and Clint Eastwood and Robert Redford. I heard Charlie Sheen wanted to do it, but I mean, it's hard to picture anyone other than Tim Robbins and Morgan Freeman in those two lead roles. I know it's, it's remarkable. Well, it was a good, it was such a strong script that I, I, people were, um, (laughs) people wanted into it. Charlie Sheen and Nicolas Cage, I think did a, put themselves on tape i had heard yeah that's what i heard too the role of andy and red um and you didn't even get a copy of the script you were just given the book right at first well back when i when i first met frank he said i'm gonna do this movie 
and uh, called Rita Hayworth and Shawshank Redemption. And he sent me a copy. He, he hadn't, I don't think he'd written the script yet. Mm. Or maybe, or maybe he had, but he sent me the. He didn't send me the script. He sent me the, the, the anthology, the Stephen King anthology. Um, but yeah, there was for I guess for a while, Tom Cruise was being considered, and I don't think Frank wanted Tom Cruise to do it. And Tom Cruise, I think, was. He didn't want to do it. Yeah. Because Frank had not, Frank hadn't directed right. much of anything by that time. And, uh, and Frank said at one point, Rob Reiner, um, Rob Reiner said, give, give the script to me mm -hmm. and I'll give you, I think he said $4 million. Um, and you can direct anything else you want, but I'll do this one. <laughs> and Frank's like, no, I know this is going to be huge. Frank said, yeah, Frank said, no, that's um, smart. I know. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. But, but uh, Rob Reiner had done stand by me, which was mm. in that same anthology. Yeah. The story, that's right. The story before Shawshank. <laughs> so, that makes sense. Well, yeah. And I heard Tim Robbins, he actually spent time in solitary confinement to prepare for that role. Did, did you do anything like that to prepare for being in a prison or how did you prepare for that role? Um, I did. I spent, uh, I spent a day or most of a day sitting in a, one of the cells, the actual cells. We shot it in a real prison mm -hmm. that had, that had just, they had just stopped using it. Um, but the cells were all there and the dining hall was there, and, you know, it just looked like this ancient prison. But uh, the only the only research that I did in that regard was to I sat in one of those cells for for several hours, one of the actual cells that the actual prisoners used to sit in for twenty three hours before they were let out for one hour, and um, and <laughs> the 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 prison itself was has such a oppressive uh, air. I mean, the ghosts of the hundreds and hundreds of people who died there uh, and the misery and the, just the ruined lives that have gone through. It's, it was easy to get into the, it was easy to, to, to feel that sort of hopeless, um, you know, this is this is our life. This we play games with each other because that's what there is. So the big excitement is a new batch of prisoners, and we yeah. bet to see who's going to cry first. You know? mm -hmm. That kind that's of thing. Like, so, well, what was it like working on set? Because I, I thought I, I read an article where Morgan Freeman said the shoot was very uh, fraught with extreme tension between the differences for the actors and the producers and the director but I'd never heard anything else about that. What's your, what was your take on it? Well, I wasn't privy to, um, you know, the private arguments or discussions between Tim and Frank or Morgan and Frank. Or, um, I found that uh, there was a camaraderie and a, there was a real feeling of camaraderie among the prisoners, among the, the group of us, the ensemble, hmm. um, which made it which made it really fun to to do the scenes. To I mean, it's exciting to sit. You're sitting at the table, and anywhere you look, there's a face. You you the camera could be on anyone around the table, um, and they were. Um, you know, they were engaged. They were, they were there in the discussion. I think uh, it's like, you know, sitting right down the, down the seat from me was James Whitmore and I'm across and Tim Robbins and across the way is Morgan Freeman. So everybody sort of brought their A game, you know? Right. No one, no one wanted to be asleep at this table. Yeah. So at that point, do you know, like, you're like, oh gosh, like 
Everyone is so good in this movie. This is going to be a huge hit. This is going to be considered one of the best movies of all time, for sure. <laughs> no, no, I don't think any of us felt that at the time. Yeah. Um, no, it was, we were just kind of submerged in telling this story. And, and um, I, re- I, I remember feeling like it, there was a great deal of respect for for one another and and like I said everyone everyone brought their a game everyone it was an extraordinary story and and a very strong group of actors who by the way were all trained on the stage that was by design right that's what Frank wanted theater actors he didn't want movie and tv guys Right. Nikki Marvin told me she was one of the producers on it, that they 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 were very uh, deliberate in that they wanted they wanted actors who knew how to be an ensemble. Mm. They didn't want it. Um, they wanted people who who, you know, it wasn't going to be a uh, a star vehicle. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, there's background, there's whatever. Right. But we have, you know, Clint Eastwood. Yeah. Because there was definitely, all the, like we said, all those attachments. I think even Tom Hanks, Tom Hanks was offered it too, but he couldn't do it because of Forrest Gump. Yeah. Yeah, that worked out okay, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then, um, yeah, you did the Green Mile, and then um, you were in the show Roswell. For, that's cool because it's a steady job, 61 episodes. But tell me about this experience, because I noticed, I think that's your only credit of directing a uh, movie or TV. You got to direct an episode of that. What was that like? Um, I enjoyed it. I, I, I didn't really want to do it again. <laughs> and yeah, you haven't done it since. <laughs> I know. I know. It was, uh, it, but it, uh, I spent the whole year. I found out at the beginning of the season that I was going to direct the second of the last episode. Oh, they picked so, it for you or, or did you? Yeah, they chose it for okay. me. Okay. And so that I would have the se- the whole season to shadow other directors oh. and sit with the editors and wow. Um and get, you know, really get a good strong idea of how this goes together, how the you know what needs to be done because once you're directing you have you know there's there's not much time. You don't see you don't even get the script until like a week before you begin filming. So, um, it's not like you have. It's not like with a film where you've been you know you've been thinking about it for a year now mm-hmm. about this scene and that scene and what you'd like to do with it. It's like um, no, the script's not ready yet. No, the script's not ready yet. Yeah, but we start filming in you know thirteen days. And there it is. <laughs> That's um, stressful. So yeah, yeah. And the casting is already done. You know, and mm-hmm. you know who's going to play everything. It was it, it was fun. It was it, it was fascinating. I've learned I learned a tremendous amount. Um, that has helped me since then as an actor mm. um, to sit on the other side of the table, to, to be on the other side of the camera was a phenomenal experience for me. Um, in just expanding my vision of the craft, of the, you know, the, uh, you can, you can get very myopic as a, as an actor, you're only responsible for, you know, this little, this little moment, this Mm -hmm. little scene, and you don't, you don't hear all the planning that went into it, the budgetary considerations, the scheduling considerations, the, you know, you're not privy to any of that stuff. Right. You, you know, they say action and then they say cut (laughs) And, and you're responsible for that. You know, you need you need to cook it up right there. Yeah. When they say, action. but none of the rest of it is your business. You know. Sure. Uh, unless you're the director. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then all of it is your business. Yeah, that's that's got to so, be no, as stressful. A great, it was a great experience. But you don't want to do it again. <laughs> I I didn't really. I thought. 
I really like acting. Um, I'm good at this. Yeah, no, and, you're. Uh, I, I'd like to keep doing that. Right. <laughs> so your buddy Frank, he uh, he cast you in The Mist, and then uh, he started doing the Walking Dead TV show. Now you didn't get cast in that. Were you considered or offered for any roles in that show? I was. I was offered. Interesting. It was like the last season of it. I was offered a, a recurring character or an arc of a character and I couldn't do it because I was filming something else. Oh. Um, so I missed the, um, I missed that opportunity. And I think I would have loved, I would have loved it. I think I'm, yeah. you know, it's sort of right up my alley. Well, and do you know about, um, I, I, th I think I heard of uh, Frank's next project. If he's, if it's going to happen, he was trying to make this American civil war movie. Did you hear about this? Yeah, it was based on a unproduced screenplay from uh, Stanley Kubrick, and so <laughs> yeah, and he he wrote this uh, he wrote this screenplay, but then he he said he couldn't find financing, which is like really surprising to me. If you're if you're Frank Darabont, you can't find financing for a project. It seems like that's got to happen eventually. I don't. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, he got. I think he got canned off of the series he created the walking dead, but then there were artistic, you know, he was butting heads with the network that was producing it. Hmm. Um, no, Frank's brilliant. Frank is, um, I'd love to, I would love to hear about his, you know, yeah, that sounds doing. intriguing. Like, I don't know. So I'm just thinking he if that does care. ever happen, you should definitely try to get a role in that one. That's not like, uh, yeah, <laughs> that'd be fun. Well, speaking of the walking, it's not a, it's not a Stephen King story. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know. It was based on a screenplay by okay. Stanley Kubrick and, and a historian guy. And then Ridley Scott was supposed to produce it, but then uh, Frank picked it up and I think maybe rewrote it or finished it or something. And so it would be cool if it actually happens. Yeah, no, it sounds that sounds exciting. Yeah, but suppose uh, I was gonna say, uh, speaking of The Walking Dead, uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, you did a movie mm -hmm. with him. He's so scary on The Walking Dead. It's just hard to picture him being like a normal guy. Like, what is he like off? I haven't seen Unholy yet. I want to watch it though. Now that I I saw that you're in it and he's in it, he's he's one of the sweetest, funniest guys you can imagine. If you follow him on Twitter, he's oh. he lives a, he only lives a couple miles away from me here. Oh, really? Okay. Um, yeah, and we live near Poughkeepsie up, or Millbrook, New York. You have a? Did um, you buy a farm upstate? Up yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's cool. And uh, yeah, but he doesn't. He lives. He lives like, you know, a few miles away, but he's constantly posting um, himself pictures of himself and his children. I, I, I listened to, I think I've heard him he's, once or twice on Howard Stern and he was pretty funny. He's yeah, but he's, he was on the set. He was just this, he's just this sweet, funny, very bright, very funny guy. You know, he's, he's great to shoot with. He's, we, uh, we had a, yeah, we had one, I would have one or two scenes together. Um, but he was just, uh, yeah, he's a terrific actor. He's yeah, he really actor. is. Which, I mean, which, you know, I'm sure you're, I'm sure you're listening, your viewing audience knows that already. Yeah. If he's a scary dude in one movie, then, right. you know, he can turn it on. Well, I think that's what's so amazing about you too, is that, you know, I was a fan of your work in Demon Knight and uh, obviously Shawshank. And then I think it wasn't until later, you know, like going on IMDb that I'm like, wait, he's the Grim Reaper from Bogus Journey? Like, I had no idea. And then, so that's like amazing when you can play characters that are so different. And that's got to be really fun for you to play totally different characters. That's fantastic. That's great. That was, I was, I was so happy to have gotten a chance to play someone who's funny and very different. And, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't always work out that way, you know. Um, but I had when I got to Los Angeles, when I got to Hollywood, it was one villain after another villain. I, I started the first movie I was in. I was the 
in Project X. I was the guy who, the scientist who ran the project that killed all these chimps. Oh yeah. And then, so sad. and then in Hard, Hard to Kill, I was the That's senator, right. the evil senator who had his family murdered, and um, the hot spot. I was a blackmailing son of a bitch. And <laughs> Die Hard Two, Die Hard Two sort of sealed it. It was like, no, 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 he's. He's an evil mother. He's, uh, you know, and Hollywood is, Hollywood is very happy that once you've, once you've proven that you can do something really well, they love to just, you know. Typecast you? They're, per they're perfectly happy to keep you doing the thing that they know you do well. And makes them money. Yeah. Them, it's hard to get them to say, to say, you know, no, but he's funny. <laughs> yeah, no. No, you you'd be amazed. He's funny too. Yeah. <laughs> so I was, so I was really happy to get a chance to do, a, you know. Yeah, other stuff. Well, so um, yeah. Iron Man three, you play the president. Is that mm -hmm. like you? You must because you have like I think one hundred and eighty credits. Is that your most lucrative residual, or is it Shawshank, or is it something else? I don't. To be honest with you, I don't. I don't know. It might be. <laughs> It plays that plays all the time, um, or Die Hard. Oh, Die Hard's a big thank one. God, yeah, thank God for residuals. Die Die Hard is a Christmas movie that you can't you can't do Christmas without. <laughs> so you do count it as one and two are both Christmas movies. You say that's a debate. That's a lot of people get really offended when you call it a Christmas movie. Well, it's it's surprising because you know. It's not like it's a wonderful life or a miracle. I'm, <laughs> you yeah. know, it's, like, like, it's a, no, I kill everybody and, uh, and then I get killed. Um, but for some reason, it's just, uh, it's become, they've become Christmas movies. Mm -hmm. Like, because they take in place in Christmas, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. The residuals are terrific. They're, thank God they have them because, uh, you know, it makes like it makes life easier. Yeah, for sure. Is there any roles that you've turned down or that besides the Walking Dead one or that you a role that you almost got that turned out to be like this huge role and you're like, oh, if only. <laughs> um, I don't think so. I say I say yes to I've said yes to almost everything that's been offered to me. I guess I've turned down. I did. I turned down something and I'll often turn down an, an, an opportunity to audition for something. Oh, um, and do you get most yeah, things you audition for then, or there, is there something that you didn't get? get that... a, I would get a fair number of them. You, there's a lot that you don't get. Um, I was offered the, I was offered the role of the killer in um, uh, the Bone Collector, Denzel Washington. Oh yeah, and uh, I turned it. I was offered it. I auditioned for it, got it, and then, and then I turned it down because they wanted me to do to show up at the beginning and show up at the end of the movie and uh, have someone else do my hands. The rest of the movie, you don't see him, mm. but it's, it's, but you see his hands or you see his feet or you see parts of his body or, and um, anyway, it didn't, it just didn't work out. I wanted, I didn't want some, you know, I didn't want someone else to be doing all of that because uh, because that's the character. Sure. You know? No, that makes sense. I want, I want to decide how he walks away. Yeah. Or, or does he touch her face before he tie puts the tape over her mouth? Or oh. do you know what I mean? Yeah. There no, a, totally. There's a lot of. There was a lot of sort of artistic. No, that's like the first Halloween movie. The guy that played Michael Myers. I mean, he had a mask on the whole time, but it's just like the way he walked and stuff. They said like when they had the sequel, they didn't. They used a different actor, and he just didn't have the same like, you know, movements and things. wasn't as creepy. Yeah, yeah, and for for I guess they it was for it was for money reasons. They want I guess mm. they could hire someone sure to put on the put on the clothes and just. You just do the hands and you just do the feet. And <laughs> I just said, and I said, I don't want someone else doing the hands and the feet. I want to do. Yeah, for sure. I don't know. I don't know. I've said, I don't think I've turned down anything that, uh, 
you didn't miss out on anything big. So, well, that's good. I don't think, I don't think so. That's good. So, I mean, cause you've worked with so many a listers, Morgan Freeman, Tom Hanks, Bruce Willis. I, you never work with Nicholas cage though. Have you? I auditioned with Nicholas cage for, um, what's the one on the airplane with, uh, I think Malkovich does it, uh, Con Air. Oh, yeah. I auditioned for that and uh, didn't get it. That was a big blockbuster, <laughs> though, for sure. But that was it. But that was, you know, there was a case. There was a case where they, they went with John Malkovich for the. Well, if you're going to lose out to somebody, he's he's pretty good. Yeah. 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 Is or is there an actor or an actress that, or director that you really wanted to work with that you haven't had a chance to yet? I haven't worked. I've never worked with Spielberg. I've worked in, he's produced things that I've been in, hmm. but I've never, I've never worked with him. I would I think that would be wonderful. Um, oh, Do you, ever, you never worked with Scorsese, did you? No, Ridley Scott. Yeah. There's a number of them that, you know, I keep learning. I keep, uh, <laughs> I'm still doing it. So, yeah, no, that's amazing. Like I said, so many credits. Um, is there any shows or movies that, that you've seen recently or that you're a fan of? I mean, do you watch a lot of movies and TV or is it kind of like now that you know how the sausage is made, you don't want to see it? I'm that way about television dramas. Um, really? I'm, yeah, I've done some, I've done a lot of them and I don't, I know how the sausage gets made. And, um, I don't, yeah, I don't like those so much. I like documentaries. I like, uh, oh, what was I watching recently? I love the Queen's Gambit. That oh, that was a, a good one. Yeah. That was a, that was a great one. I'm watching Seinfeld for some reason. I, we never watched Seinfeld before. Isn't that great? Um, we started, yeah, we just started binging. Um, yeah, we're binging stuff these days. But, uh, <laughs> I love it. You know, the, but but tell me, you know, but the, there's a lot of stuff that happens on television now. Like in Succession is brilliant on HBO. Um, the um, Breaking Bad. Oh, Holy shit. What a, yes. So good. You know, just brilliant. Just brilliant. Just Did brilliant. you ever work with Brian Cranston on anything? No, no, I'd love to. Yeah, put that on your bucket list. But He's just, amazing. Yeah, there's so there's there's so much that's uh, maybe you could do a guest spot on uh, Better Call see, Saul. And, and that's the that? Better Call Saul's. Uh, have you watched that one? The follow up. Yeah, you could. Right. You should do. You should get on that show. That'd be amazing. I should get on that show. Yeah, <laughs> just call him up and say, "Hey, I cast call me." Him up and say, hey. Yeah. Um, what about Bill? <laughs> I love it. All right. So stage of twilight is coming out. Uh, right. You're playing this dying old man and then Salem's lot. The remake is coming out. This is a, uh, and then is there another movie you did called the gathering with uh this is like an all-star cast of horror people, Linda Blair, Robert England, Bill Mosley. Are you in this one? Gathering. I don't know. It was, I think it was on IMDb. I swear. Am I, am, am I mistaken? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, maybe you're getting a credit for it. Am I crazy? Maybe I I'm don't crazy. No, I don't. Well, that one doesn't sound. Stage crazy. of Twilight. Say, oh, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, Perhaps they've changed. She came from the woods. Is that another one that you're doing? I did that one. Yes. Okay. That's a that's a sort of an indie horror. Indie horror, nice. and then the, yeah, the Unholy is out now. I need to watch that. That's on yeah, Stars, I think. Right. Unholy is good. Yeah. And um, and Salem's Lot should be killer. That should. That should kick ass. That's a great story, and terrific, um, you know, terrific people. And the stage of twilight, which is going to—I, I, I, I'm not exactly sure how they do it with indies. Um, I think it's going to be submitted to the festival, festival right? Yeah. First, and then, and then look for a distributor. Would it be at Sundance? Because I was thinking about going to Sundance this year because I just it, hear so many good might. things about it. I, I think it's. Um, yeah, and it might have a shot of getting in. I think they get a lot of submissions, but because it's Karen, Allen, and myself, um, and I think it's I think it's good. I 
Um, I'm really excited to see it. You said if it's the most maybe, proud, maybe the best thing I've ever done. That's amazing. That's a great statement. So, well, this has been a lot of fun. I'd like to end each episode uh, with a charity or a, a nonprofit. That's something that's, is there something that's near and dear to your heart that you want to just quick, give a quick mention to here? There is. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, wounded warriors. Oh, yeah. That's I a think, great one. Uh, I think that's a terrific, um, that's a terrific effort. Absolutely. I will put that in the notes along with, is there, should I direct people to a website or social media or? No, I think it's right. It's just online. Um, you know, you can look it up. Oh yeah. For that one for, I'll put the wounded warrior in there so people could donate, but I'm saying for you, yeah, shall I'll put that in the notes too. Something for you oh, for myself. Yeah. It's like just your IMDB or, I mean, is there something direct um, that people should follow no, you, you on? Yeah. I'm on Twitter as William it's W M underscore Sadler. If you want okay. to follow me on Twitter, okay. Um, I'm on Facebook as William Sadler. Um, yeah, I'm not hard to find. Great, so people can follow you and uh, keep up with all these yes, projects. Can. I can't wait for to see the stage of Twilight. Pictures of my, of yeah, your what? Behind the, behind the scenes photographs and. Oh, do you post behind the scenes stuff? Well, when they when I'm allowed to. Yeah, you know, what are the rules on that kind I, of thing? Depends if you're in, if it's a Marvel movie, you can get fired for that. Ooh. Okay. If, uh, <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> no, it's true. They'll, it depends on the movie. Um, but anyways, great talking to you. Yeah. Great talking to you too. All right. Well, I'll put all that stuff in the notes and uh, look forward to seeing your uh, future projects. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks Thank for all the entertainment over the years. I've really enjoyed it. My plus. So did I. Yeah, I bet. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Welcome. Thank you. Once again, William Sadler. Follow him on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Make sure to look for Salem's Lot and Stage of Twilight is the one with Karen, Karen Allen, and he says is the best work he's ever done. So I'm excited for both of those. I want to see his episode of Tales from the Crypt. Uh, I guess that show is not on any streaming services. It's so lame because I think I've seen most of the episodes, but it's been so long. So I'd love to revisit that. It is on my Amazon wish list if anyone wants to get me the Tales from the Crypt entire series DVDs. So that would be fun. But if you don't want to spend money and you want to get me something for Christmas, you can just follow me on social media, subscribe to the show on YouTube, or write me a nice review on Apple Podcasts. You can do all those things. Those would be a great gift, and it's free. It doesn't take you, cost you any money. So thank you so much again for listening. It's been a fun ride. I still can't believe 200 episodes. Again, I'm very grateful to all of you. So have a great rest of your day and remember to shoot for the moon.